Hello, my name is Chamath Gunawardena. I am a master's student at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Uh, Whitewater is a computer science program, and my uh, project is on optimization modeling for clustering a design structure matrix. Uh, for acknowledgments, uh, I'd like to thank Patrick Monahan, my supervisor at the Blackthorn LLC internship based at Whitewater, Wisconsin, and Amelia Russo, who gave me the idea for this project of sequencing a design structure matrix. Her uh, project was on a, a Department of Defense predictive project management. And that involved using a design structure matrix and predicting whether projects can be done in time based off the tasks and the deadline given. So for my project, we used GAMS, which is a general algebraic modeling system with CPLEX. And we implemented a mixed integer, linear, and quadratic models to find optimal clusters. Uh, GAMS is used for large-scale modeling applications, mathematical programming, and optimization. So a design structure matrix is a 2D representation of structural or functional interrelationships of objects or tasks. So the tasks are placed around the matrix on as rows and columns, uh, and tasks are lettered here, so tasks A, B, C, D, and E, and so on. And here, X's represent task dependencies. So task D requires information from tasks E, F, and L. So that means if you go to row D, task D depends on E, F, and L. So those are the X's marked there. And task B transfers information to tasks C, F, G, J, and K. So that means these tasks depend on task B. So if we go to column B, we see an X on C, F, G, J and K. So this is a visual representation of task dependencies. It's pretty much a design structure matrix. So the problem at hand is sequencing a DSM. So the DSM can be manipulated through sequencing to identify areas where tight couplings between tasks exist. So these tight couplings are shown here on the diagonal of the matrix. And this hat uh, these can be identified once a uh, DSM has been sequenced. So as you can see, task A is not in the top anymore. Now it's task B. And they're sequenced this way uh, to give us an ordering of the task. So a DSM can be used to identify ordering of tasks and diff difficult aspects of the design process. So uh, if we see here, task B does not depend on any other task. So that's why B can be ordered as the first task to start. And then C can go after B because the only task that de C depends on is task B, and so on. So that's a sequencing a design structure, basically permuting the tasks or the rows and columns so that we can get this lower triangular matrix. So DSM sequencing methods include path searching, powers of the adjacency matrix method, and optimization. So uh, that. What we are dealing with is optimization, so linear modeling and quadratic modeling. And in literature, path searching has been done, powers of the adjacency matrix method has been done, but there's no mention of optimization, using optimization with linear modeling and quadratic modeling to sequence a DSM. So uh, path searching uh, involves finding loops between tasks where each task depends on each other and vice versa. Tasks with no dependencies are permuted to the edges of the design structure matrix. So here is our original DSM. And uh, if we go to the sequence DSM, tasks G and B were permuted to the edges of the DSM. And that is because if you look here in the original, uh, I mean, either one, but uh, task G's column is blank, so that means no task depends on task G. So they, in path searching, you permute task G to the end of the matrix, and if any other task had a blank column, it would be permuted to the end of the matrix. So And then task B is a blank row, so that means it does not depend on any other task. So that's why task B was permuted to the beginning of the matrix. So if any other task had a blank row, that means it doesn't depend on anything, it would also be permuted to the beginning of the matrix. 
and then we are resulting with these lower triangular matrix and these tight couplings that we can identify. To, and these couplings represent loops between tasks. So task L depends on task J, task J depends on task L, so that's a loop between the two or a cycle. And uh, this coupling here represents a loop, feedback loop between task L, J, F, and I. So the powers of the adjacency matrix method uh, it involves an adjacency matrix, which is the binary design structure matrix, where tasks with dependencies are marked as 1 and no dependency between tasks marked as 0. The method involves raising the DSM to the nth power to determine which task can be reached from itself in n steps. So here in our original DSM, we are square it to get this uh, resulting matrix, and squaring it means a matrix multiplication of this DSM by itself to get this. And this method is more of trying to identify whether loops exist between the tasks. So to identify whether loops uh, exist between tasks, you look at the diagonal of the resulting matrix. And here we see two ones uh, on A and B. So this represents a feedback loop between task A and task B. If we cube the design structure matrix, we see that uh, resulting a cluster or the resulting diagonal gives us that task, there's a feedback loop between task A, B, and C. And then if we raise the DSM to a power of four, we see a, t a coupling between task A and B and a coupling between task C and D. And so this is uh, essentially a method to identify whether loops exist within the DSM, but not really sequencing it, but we can sequence it after identifying whether there are loops or not. So our model design involves a binary design structure matrix and a permutation matrix P that can permute the rows of the binary design structure matrix. So the, uh, here's a permutation matrix P to permute the rows of the binary design structure matrix to give us these sub matrices A, B, C, and D. And what we want to do is uh, minimize the number of ones in the rows of the binary design structure matrix corresponding to submatrix A and to the right of A being submatrix B and maximize the number of ones in the columns of the binary design structure matrix corresponding to submatrix A and below A, which is C. And here's our objective function. Uh, so A minus B plus C. So we're minimizing B, maximizing A and C. So basically, the number of ones in A and C. And D represents uh, the next cluster that we're going to look at, so the next coupling. So this method involves looking at each coupling, and basically D is the next iteration. So D will result in another uh, permute, permuted, or we'll, we will permute D to look like what we permuted this binary design structure matrix. And it continues to go on until uh, we reach the size of the matrix. So our linear model, we have these variables xi, aij, bij, cij. They are binary variables such that one less than is less than equal i and j is less than equal n. So we assume we've just uh, sequenced the DSM up to next index minus one, where next index is the beginning of the next cluster. So next index would be uh, right around here where D begins. So right here, right here. Since A is going to be a square matrix because that's a that's a coupling. A coupling will always be a square matrix since it's a loop between tasks. Uh, we fix the size of blocks A to be size by size where A contains the most optimal rows and columns after sequencing the DSM in range Ni to N. So uh, next index so from next index to n, uh, sorry, I meant next index starts at where a is, and then it'll eventually be where d is. But uh, we look from next index to n the most optimal rows and columns that will be placed into a. 
and A will be size by size. So size is just a variable, the size of the cluster that we're dealing with here. And we use XI to keep track of that cluster. So uh, XI will be seeing which uh, columns and rows will be permuted in the binary design structure matrix to that sub matrix A. And we, we go through next index up to N to see which rows and columns we want to permute. And the objective uh, allows us to find the most optimal uh, rows and columns to permute to submatrix A. So we capture submatrix A corresponding to the indices where A, I, J equals one. So here A, submatrix A will be size by size and based off of what uh, X, I, and X, J are, you will get the most optimal rows and columns because of our objective function and the constraint on X. And for B and C, do something similar based off the objective function and X, some matrix B will be created and some matrix C will be created right here, B and C. And uh, the size of submatrix B will be the same uh, number of rows as submatrix A, but different number of columns. It'll be n minus uh, next index minus size plus one. Submatrix C is the opposite, where the number of rows is n minus ni minus size plus one, but the same number of uh, columns as submatrix A. So our linear model objective is this. So we saw that A minus B plus C, but the lambdas are weights and they add up to one and they essentially mean signify uh, how much weight you want to put on maximizing A, minimizing B, or maximizing C. And you can play around with those ways to see which results give you the most accurate results. And a and B and C are equal as such, and we defined AIJ and BIJ and CIJ earlier. And yeah, that's our linear model. Uh, our quadratic model, we use the same XI to be a binary variable, similar to what was used in the linear model. And uh, we have the lambda values again to give weight to certain sum matrices. So like the number of ones for in A, number of ones in B, number of ones in C. Um, and here, uh, this is a quadratic model because we're multiplying our variable x by itself in the quadratic function, or uh, in the quadratic objective function. So our objective function is a quadratic function. So in our linear model, the objective function and the constraints were all linear functions. And here uh, we have a represented as xi times xj, and b, uh, the number of rows, Submatrix B will be the same as A. Number of columns, submatrix B will be different, B1 minus XJ. Then the number of uh, rows in C will be the same as the number of columns in B, but the number of columns in C will be the same as the number of columns in A. And we have the same XI constraint here, where we're trying to find the most optimal rows and columns to be permuted to submatrix A, which takes care of itself with the objective. So our sequencing algorithm uh, can be used with any of the uh, models, so linear or quadratic, for DSM sequencing. Uh, it goes through n iterations, and at the kth iteration, the algorithm has sequenced to the previous k minus 1 rows and columns, so up to a. And at the kth iteration, it calls one of the models with size equaling to 1. So at the kth iteration, we're going into the D matrix here, and then we're restarting it. We're permuting D so that it'll give it another set of submatrices A, B, C, and D within here. And that's basically calling one of the models. And our size is equal to 1, so we're finding the most optimal row and column to create the new permuted bi binary design structure matrix. So for our results in the linear solution and quadratic solution, task two, three, and 11 must be performed sequentially. Task one and seven can go in parallel. The block 10, nine, 12, six has coupled tasks and the block four, eight, five has also has coupled tasks. Oops. 
right. Uh, for our results, this is the visual representation. This is our original design structure matrix. This is our linear model, and this is our quadratic model. This right here is MIT's uh, path searched uh, sequence design structure matrix. So it's on the same original DSM here. And the difference between the path searched design structure matrix and the optimization models are that if you notice here, task G is permuted to the bottom because nothing depends on task G. And that's why in path searching, as we discussed before, task G will be permitted to the bottom. Uh, but in our models, um, we use numbering as tasks instead. But uh, it's, it's basically the same thing where A equals 1, B equals 2, 3 equals C, and so on. And uh, task G, in our case, is task 7. And task 7 wasn't permuted to the bottom. It was permuted to the fifth index. The reason for that is task 7 depends on task 2 and task 11 to finish. So that's why it was permuted uh, uh, for right after task 2 and 11. So in this case, task G depends on B and K to finish. So we in our models, the G was permuted to right after A and K. So G was placed right after K, because all it needs to run is for B and K to finish. Now, that doesn't really affect the time of the whole project to finish, but if this was a much larger project, uh, a large, uh, much more tasks involved, then we would want to get rid of the or get the tasks that can be done finished right away, so that we can focus on these couplings right here, couplings uh, afterwards, and not have to worry about any other tasks being finished. So because the couplings are loops between tasks, and the loops there could be some problems involved because one task depends on another on the other to finish. And when you have a loop size maybe like 50 or 20, then a lot of management has to go into it and to try and get all of those tasks done before going on to the next cluster of the next loop. So we want to get done with all of the non-loop tasks. All right, uh, so that is all for my presentation. Uh, we went through uh, how to sequence a design structure matrix through optimization, uh, linear modeling, and quadratic modeling. And I hope to research this further in the future. And uh, thank you again for listening.